Hello, I'm Dr. Inman. This is the end of a third part series on cardiac anomalies in the canine, congestive heart failure, digest, um, a cardiac, uh, congestive heart failure, cardiac dial dilation essentially, um, enlarged heart for instance, and also cardiac arrhythmias. Cardiac arrhythmia is going to be an interruption of the top part and the bottom part of the heart basically communicating adequately with one another. So the lub isn't necessarily connected to the dub, lub, dub, lub, dub, lub, dub. Essentially what happens is that connection is compromised due to a number of different factors essentially and what we can end up with is an arrhythmia where we end up with ventricular tachycardia, ventricular ectopic beats, uh, uh, atrial or supraventricular tachycardia or fibrillation. They end up with um, EKGs that look crazy, essentially, instead of a nice beat, 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 we end up with craziness, essentially. And the body, and the cardiac, back, cardiovascular tissue endeavors to have a periodicity of about 60 cycles per second, so it'll reset itself, however, as it's still continually being interrupted by aberrant signals from the top part of the heart to the bottom part of the heart, essentially that phenomenon actually can actually produce another series of ectopic beats and all kinds of problems, so the heart basically is getting confused several times a minute essentially and can cause uh, ca cardiovascular problems, uh, syncope, it can cause congestive heart failure, it can cause death. So essentially it is not a good situation. We treat it very commonly with medications that is designed to slow down and re-regulate the communication of the top part of the heart to the bottom part of the heart. If your dog or if a client's dog is on that medication and it's solving the problem, my recommendation is not taking that animal off that medication. Uh, essentially once we start this type of therapy and here comes the trick when we go ahead then and this condition is very commonly held in place by elevated sympathetic tonus and so we can go through and we can adjust the animal with the somatovisceral therapy that we discuss in module 4 of the, of the courses that we teach and essentially relatively easy to do but I would caution you in doing so you want to watch the dog very carefully when you do this because you can basically take this dog out of an arrhythmia or a problem that the animal is trying to compensate for and put the animal back Back into normal rhythm, sinus rhythm, which would be good. A lot of times we'll do this when the animal's on an EKG to actually watch the EKG and to see if it changes from the adjustment. So we can do that just with an adjusting instrument. The other way that we can do it too is we can do that by utilizing laser therapy and the frequencies that we use involve re-establishing normal functionality of the autonomic nervous system. Oops. the autonomic nervous system of the animal essentially and what we'll do is we'll direct this information to this particular type of tissue in such a fashion that allows us to um, uh, 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 reorganize the neurological conduction from the top part of the heart to the bottom part of the heart. We'll use 9 for nerve, we'll use 33 for heart, we'll use 66 for heart, 300 for uh, capillary, uh, 100 for arterial blood uh, and also 4 for venous blood along with some other frequencies that we use specifically for a specific type of arrhythmia. Now, in the uh, actual laser course, the advanced laser course, we have over 2,700 disease conditions that we've mapped out the specific frequencies for, and I won't bother you with all of that because it's part of a course that you would take. That particular um, uh, list of frequencies is proprietary because unless you have a laser that can deliver a frequency-specific laser therapy, then you're probably kind of out of luck essentially because um, with the less you can deliver an exacting frequency, you're, you know, the technology really doesn't work. We provide that for people who've taken the course because they have also have a laser that's able to deliver that type of information. I would encourage you to go to the vomtech.com website and you can see that we have complete sets of courses. The amount of data that we have for frequency specific laser therapy is unbelievable quite frankly. You name a disease condition and we've got a frequency that has been clinically tested and true and, and, and tried to make sure that it solves the problem. It's kind of like a cookbook approach to taking care of just about every disease process that we see without medicine and surgery most of the time. Again, I would, in, in an arrhythmic type of animal, however, I would recommend that you not take the animal off of medication until the animal's had at least a week or so of laser and BOM therapy, essentially because the, that would be pulling the rug out from under this animal. Now the trick part of it is, and this is the same thing with endocrine disease, is when the animal is stabilized on medication and laser essentially, then what we do is we begin a method of decreasing the medication. We cut it in half for a week and then if the animal's okay we cut it in half for another week and if the animal's okay we cut it in half for another week. Do we get down to about the 16th of the dosage and at that point 
If the animal is normal, essentially, then we continue to laser the animal intermittently, essentially, and uh, we discontinue the medication, and we've done that for virtually thousands of cases, essentially getting them off the medication because we've fixed the problem, the problem being an unbalanced uh, autonomic nervous system. Sometimes in the field it's called dysautonomia, dysautonomia. We'll discuss that in another uh, seminar, or I'm sorry, mini lecture uh, in the future. Dysautonomia basically is predispos predisposes the animal sometimes to arrhythmias. Other animals have all, all kinds of other problems, but, but in some animals they have an arrhythmia directed by this dysautonomia. That is a disease process that is just recently being named by the veterinary community, but we've been treating it for the last 30 years. I'm Dr. Inman. This is a uh, lecture on uh, canine arrhythmia. Thank you for listening and have a great day.